she had to break my waters for me. I had suddenly dilated to 10 centimeters. Then we're gonna have to intervene and we'll probably have to use the forceps. I wasn't crying straight away. I remember looking at the midwife and she looked worried. I was bleeding out, but I lost almost a liter and a half of my blood within 30 seconds. We're gonna have to ring the alarm and loads of people are just gonna come flooding in. We'll have to take you into theaters. I felt like it was an episode of Grey's Anatomy, I'm not gonna lie. Salam and welcome back to my channel or welcome to my channel if this is the first video you've seen from me. My name's Aziza. I have a daughter who's just over one now and today's video is going to be about my labour and delivery. I don't know how accurate this is going to be because I made notes last night about a birth I had over a year ago. So hopefully things will be kind of accurate because I had my husband to help me while I was making the notes as well which is so strange because I'm the sort of person to document things as they're happening but for me I don't I was just so chill about it which is very unlike me and it, you'll see why anyway as I go into the story I'm going to put a disclaimer or a warning or a trigger or a graphic warning here I would say this video isn't for anyone who's under 16 maybe even under 18 things I'm going to be talking about will be quite graphic and if you're squeamish I don't recommend you listen to my story I hope you are sat down you can grab your snacks because this might be a long video so hopefully you enjoy my labour and delivery story the whole labour and delivery of my daughter happened within 24 hours I remember I hadn't had a good night's sleep and I went to bed around midnight the night that everything sort of started happening and that's really unlike me especially while I was pregnant because while I was pregnant I could sleep for a solid 12 hours uninterrupted and it was just it was so so <laughs> rejuvenating or what's the word refreshing and I wouldn't wake up sluggish you know sometimes you, you sleep for too long and you wake up and you're just not feeling great because you slept too much I woke up at 4 15 and needed the toilet because obviously a heavily pregnant woman nine months pregnant I went to the toilet and I noticed that there was water leaking right and so I like looked at some tissue and it wasn't anything that I had seen before which therefore led me to believe it was my waters that started to break and it was like tinged slightly pink so as me thinking oh god is that blood as well and obviously um well maybe not obviously but if you've been subscribed to my channel then you'd know that I've had a miscarriage and so because I miscarried my first ever pregnancy with my daughter was my second pregnancy I think you just sort of hold your breath a lot during the pregnancy and that's sort of what I did like I do all the steps for preparation for the preparation of my daughter's arrival but ultimately I just didn't get too excited over anything because until she was here in my arms and I could see her oh god I'm gonna cry until I could actually see her, nothing was sort of real. It was real because like I'd feel her kicking and I'd like, go to the scans and hear her heartbeat and stuff like that. But because I hadn't seen her face, so you might be able to hear my daughter screaming. Like not screaming, she's playing, <laughs> she's okay. Until I saw my actual daughter in the flesh, I was sort of holding my breath the whole time. So I saw the blood, well it wasn't blood. I saw like the pink tinge of water. And I thought, okay, I've heard that amniotic fluid can be pink and it's totally normal for it to be pink there wasn't like there was no mucus plug that had come out that you hear of and there was no like the big show that people talk about when i've like watched other people's stories on youtube um and there was no gush or anything like that it was literally like a trickle but i just knew it wasn't normal yeah it, it was expected i was nine months pregnant so anyway i put on a pad and i went back to bed i couldn't sleep at all i was awake from that time in the morning um pretty much until i gave birth to my daughter and it was 5 45 i remember i had to go to the toilet again um and then this time guess what there's more amniotic fluids there's more water um and the pink is a bit darker on the pad now so again i'm thinking bismillah i hope everything's okay and um i started to feel a few cramps but i think Oh, it was so minor it wasn't even like period cramps it was just so minor obviously like i told my husband when i've gone to the toilet when i'd gone to the toilet the first time i was like babe babe i think it's happening i think my waters are breaking he was like yeah okay um he just sort of went back to sleep and we're like look just get some more rest and then we'll see what, what's happening later on um in the day around 6 a.m i woke him up again i was like look um you know there's more liquid coming out it was still so minuscule like the amount of water that was leaking it was not even a trickle from a tap really but obviously me being the overthinker, me being high risk pregnancy as well, you know, I take medications and so I had to be monitored just a bit more. And because I've had a miscarriage before and stuff like that, I guess they just wanted to see that everything was fine. And I just basically told them what was happening to me. I had told them 
you know, look, I've got this medical condition. I also have GBS, so group B strep, which is, it's a common, relatively common thing in pregnancy. It was explained to me to be like this bacteria that we all have um, as pregnant women and it can it can sort of remain dormant during pregnancy or it can sort of be triggered or activated or something and essentially it's completely fine for me like i'm not in any harm from having gbs but it could be a danger for my daughter when she's born because it's a sort it's a certain type of bacteria they're very vulnerable to illnesses at that age because they're literally fresh out of the womb <laughs> and so i would have to be put onto antibiotics although my waters have started to break but i didn't feel any pain any discomfort anything like that they asked me to come in so that they could check me so i remember telling my husband look i think i think maybe we should put the bags in the car um just so we're ready i think we should get the bags and put them in the car um he was like no no let's just let's just go to the hospital we'll see what they're saying i was like okay i just had a feeling this was around 6 a.m i had then you know i'd gone taken shower I knew that I wasn't in any pain or discomfort or anything, so I was sort of gave myself a little bit of time and then I got ready to go. So I, I literally put on a little bit of makeup. And when I say, like, I just did my eyebrows and, like, some concealer and mascara and whatever. It sounds like a lot, but <laughs> there's me thinking, I want to take these beautiful angelic photos with my newborn and, you know, what if my... And I'm just like, oh god, I'm going to have my dark circles, I'm going to have my eyebrows that are all messy and... All. Anyway so relevant when it comes down to it because when it actually comes down to the nitty-gritty everything is just laying out there you like it's like you just don't care like there's no modesty anymore <laughs> so we arrived at the hospital at half eight we didn't have our bags we didn't have anything i literally had my little handbag with like my chewing gum and my phone i think i didn't even eat anything i hadn't eaten anything that morning because this was the back end of covid my husband wasn't allowed to be with me still and so i saw the midwife and she checked me using a speculum. It's gonna be uncomfortable. I'm gonna just have to open you up a little bit using this tool, the speculum. You can Google what it looks like. It kind of looks like a like a pair of scissors. That sounds really scary, but it's not that it's not that bad. She had confirmed that my waters had started to break, but it was ever so slight. And then she said, "This is the part that got me, and this is the first time I cried that day." Then she said that she could see lots of hair. Oh my god, I'm gonna just, I might be an emotional mess during this video. But she said that she could see lots of hair and i think i think if you've ever had a loss before and you sort of block yourself from feeling all the happiness that you know you could feel but you sort of know that it's hard to let yourself feel that knowing that things can go wrong and they have gone wrong before i um that yeah that was the first time i cried but i was sort of like oh my god someone else has seen my actual daughter not through a scan but actually with their eyes it was really it was just really surreal and i was like oh my god yes i knew she would have hair <laughs> she had like this dark black like thick hair anyway once she once we were done i asked her if i was okay to go and she said oh no no you won't be going home today you're going to be staying at the hospital you're in labor technically speaking because your walks have started to break i was like yeah okay but you know i'm i don't feel any pain like can't i just go home i can then labor naturally at home this is exactly what i wanted and this is what i stated in my birth plan sort of thing by the way nothing <laughs> almost nothing i planned for and wrote down in my birth plan happened i sort of i don't know how i'm gonna do it but i sort of want to do a reaction to my birth plan video <laughs> because i watched it the other day and i was like wow wow that didn't happen that didn't happen that didn't happen wow i asked for a lot of things and alhamdulillah like even though nothing really went to plan i would still say it was it was a positive experience and it sort of just had to happen the way it happened because of the situation that i was in also oh my god i watched my birth plan video and i watched my hospital bag video and during my pregnancy i didn't think that i looked that different like i actually didn't really gain fat like i didn't gain fat weight during my pregnancy that was more so like i gained it postpartum because i was just a whole other story i think a whole other video needs to be dedicated to postpartum yeah i was just watching those videos again and i looked so swollen i looked like i was in pain i almost looked like i was botched in the face because my cheeks were very like everything was just swollen my fingers were swollen and my lips looked weird um yeah it just i guess it sort of just looked like i was a bit botched and there's me thinking at the time wow i look great <laughs> anyway i did look great my skin was doing great. I was glowing. I actually was glowing. My husband said, well, it's like... Anyway, doesn't matter. I'm going off track. 
um, yeah, so she said, no, you won't be going home. Um, if you didn't have GBS, then we would send you home. But because your, your warts have started to break already, just a little bit, um, and because you've got this bacteria, your baby could be in danger. And so I was like, oh, okay. That's when I started to realize my birth plan was not gonna go the way I had planned for it to. She told me I'd have to have a cannula put in my hand and that I would need to then be put pretty much onto an antibiotic drip straight away. Then went out to my husband and told him, um, look, this is happening pretty much right now. Um, we need to get the bags. Um, let's call my mum. Mum's at home. She can like help find things in the house. Like the I made some energy balls. You can help bring them out of the freezer and that sort of stuff. And anyway, so my husband then left to get the hospital bags and the food that I had made of myself. <laughs> I laugh because I literally you'll see why but like I didn't I wasn't able to eat for over a day as my husband's gone I've gone back into this room with the midwife and she was like oh it's gonna hurt and I was like okay she put the cannula into my my right hand into one of the veins here and that was sort of just dangling off me until we got to the delivery room around quarter past 10 we moved to the delivery suite and it was actually a really lovely room it had the bed in there it also had like a cubicle like a shower cubicle um, toilet it was really lovely it was private they had a door and then in front of the door was a curtain so I'd met the midwife that was going to be looking after me and she's really she was a young midwife she was really nice um, and they had obviously had my birth plan because they had, my birth plan was included in the white book that you get or I got a white book anyway I don't know what color it is for anyone else but um, I had printed it off and put it into the pack so the midwives could see one of the midwives put on some compression socks for me and that's pretty much what I wore for the next two three days Although I had packed clothes um, and my husband had packed clothes as well. A um, lot of things that I packed in the hospital bag, I didn't actually end up using just because of the situation I was because I was pretty immobile, which was sort of like one of the worst things that I wanted to, to happen to me during labor. Anyway, so then a midwife, a couple of midwives came in along with the doctor. Alhamdulillah, everyone was female. So the doctor was basically talking me through my birth plan and then the only point she really made was about the tearing and you know how I, if you watch my birth plan you'd know that I said that I wanted to tear naturally and she's like um obviously give me her opinion of course she said um you know if sometimes it depends on the tear but sometimes it's better to um just make a surgical cut so that we can control the bleeding and control what's happening to you and I was like okay um I was pretty much just like we'll see what happens when it happens um and she was like she also said don't be a martyr if you need the epidural just ask for the epidural um, and if you'd watched my birth plan as well, you'd know that I had epidural as sort of like one of the last resorts as well. So the key thing the midwife told me was that I'd need to be augmented. I'd never heard of augmentation before. I'd only heard of induction of labour. So essentially the difference between induction and augmentation is that induction is to basically artificially break your waters to start labour. I think if I got that correct. Whereas augmentation is to help your labor progress quicker once your waters have started to break slightly or once they've started to break generally. So I needed to be augmented, which meant I had to go on a hormone drip. That was that was kind of hard to hear because that would then mean that things wouldn't be happening naturally like I wanted them to. Things would be happening artificially, or meaning that because my contractions would be brought on artificially, they would be a lot more painful than normal. So there's me, I'm now sitting on the bed and I've got my cannula in my hand and I've got um, I got the antibiotic drip going through my veins and then I've got the hormone drip going through my veins as well. And then my husband arrived and we basically told him that look, I've had to go on to some hormones. They gave me another option but I can't remember it for the life of me. Um, but ultimately the other options would have taken longer because ultimately in that option I'd have to go on to a hormone drip anyway. And this was basically all because I had GBS and they just wanted to reduce the risk of anything happening to my daughter um, or her catching anything or infection or illness or anything like that. Yeah, my husband came back around 11 a.m. and I had like a quick Tesco meal day. I'm sitting up laying on the bed. Um, my belly was strapped with the monitors so I could hear my daughter's heartbeat um, and like the contraction monitor was also behind me. Everything was sort of set up waiting for contractions to happen um, but it was really annoying because like I said in my birth plan I wanted to be able to be walking around the room I wanted to be able to do what I wanted and be free during labour and that didn't happen for me unfortunately strapped to the machines really 
um, and to the medication. So every time I needed something, like I needed to go to the toilet, I'd have to ring the bell and I don't know, I just felt kind of bad doing that because obviously it's the midwife's job, but it's like, I want to be able to be independent. I'd have to ring the bell and the midwife had had to like unclip the IV or whatever it is. I don't even know these technical terms, but yeah, I'd have to then be hooked back up and it was just kind of annoying, but it, was, it wasn't too bad. So two hours later, around 1 p.m., I started to feel contractions and they gradually became more painful. And because things were happening artificially due to these hormones, things progress really, really quickly. In my case, it did at least. You know how you hear people can be in labor for like 48 hours, 72 hours? It's because it's happening naturally, right? Because this is not happening naturally, things can go from zero to 100 very fast. <laughs> So anyway, I started to feel period pains, or something that I could relate to period pains, um, except it was sort of like in a different location, it was sort of just across my stomach. And during this time, I was offered gas and air. I don't know what's up with gas and air, some people find it like a miracle, right? For me, it wasn't so miraculous. <laughs> I used the gas and air, but it sort of just gave me a headache. You know, some people say that they get that feeling of being high on gas and air. I don't know what it's like to be high, babes. So I tried the gas and air and I was just dizzy, or like, I don't know what it is, it just didn't seem to work for me. Around 3 p.m. I couldn't talk through the pain anymore. So within the space of like four hours, I was in like, a, I was getting through these contractions and I wasn't able to, I wasn't like jokey happy as user anymore. I was just getting through it as best as I could. And from basically 3 p.m. to 5 p.m. I was in a lot of pain. And subhanAllah, it's like once the contractions stop, it's like, oh, I'm back to my normal self but obviously these are contractions they will get closer together in a shorter amount of time and so things will sort of just be pain the whole time i did find one relief though and that was if i need to go to the toilet just sitting on the toilet seemed to help the contractions somehow i'm not too sure what it was about that but again gravity i'm always an advocate for gravity when it comes to labor and delivery i guess that helped some of the discomfort gas and i wasn't doing much so i wasn't on any painkillers right and so this was just happening fast and it was kind of surprising to me and my husband could see the change in me in how things had just progressed really quickly and i just become sort of like don't talk to me <laughs> so around 5 p.m uh, i was checked to see how dilated i was and there's me thinking oh i'm going through all this pain let me just be at least three centimeters dilated if i'm three centimeters dilated i'm like 33 percent of the way there and um, so they checked me and I was only two centimeters dilated. Bear in mind, I've got a health condition where I need uninterrupted sleep, otherwise things can be very difficult for me health-wise. And because I only had four hours sleep before where I usually get eight to 12, it was quite difficult for me. I also have anxiety, which doesn't help. And I've also got a lot of anxiety around the pregnancy because of my previous loss. So it's, there's a kind of a lot of factors here. And so, yeah, they checked me and I was only two centimeters dilated. And that's when I knew that I wanted the epidural because at least with the epidural I'd be able to sleep and not feel the discomfort and get some rest and have my body relax and do things um, without feeling the stress of it. So it's pretty known that a woman who is relaxed and calmer during her labour tends to dilate quicker, generally speaking, than someone who is frantic. <laughs> the other pain relief option was to have the thigh injection. There were two options for the pain relief first option was pethidine the other option i'm not sure it's called it began with d they only had one option now out of these two options i could only have one of these pain relief injections it's something to do with like the medication that i was on wouldn't work well with this sort of injection and what was in this injection and the injection that i could take the hospital didn't have it available anyway so the only pain relief i had was paracetamol that doesn't even touch the sides mate the gas and air that wasn't helping the other option was epidural epidural at least i could get some sleep with it so i opted for the epidural the epidural was administered at 8 20 pm so i was waiting about three and a half hours for the epidural and during this time the contractions are basically back to back and so for this whole period i'm like suffering which obviously is like expected but because these are artificial contractions again they're not normal contractions <laughs> And obviously I don't really have anything to compare it to because I've never had artificial contractions before. I've never had normal contractions before either. Bear in mind, my waters still had not broken. So, oh God, I don't even, 
I don't even know how to speak about this bit. Um, so I'm contracting intensely. This was past 8 p.m. now, so the midwife shift had changed. So I had a new mid midwife come to see me. And so this midwife had told me that she had to do a membrane sweep to fully break my waters. I cringe when I think about it. So she had to break my waters for me. Basically means moving and swirling her fingers in this circular motion to pop this sack I guess. Oh my god. I wasn't on any I wasn't on any pain meds, yeah. The epidural hadn't kicked in yet. Also having the epidural I had to be put on a catheter as well because obviously I couldn't control in, in the end I couldn't control what was happening. I had the epidural thingy in my back and I had <laughs> I had I had my IV thingy with hormones and antibiotic drips. It was just like very medical. Yeah, so she did the membrane sweep. I remember my husband was sat to my right and he was just sat in the chair and I remember just like squirming and like rolling to my side as she's doing it because I it was like a need of wanting to scream and vomit at the same time there's nothing I can compare this sort of discomfort and pain to but it was just awful and that was the first time that I had I think in my life ever experienced tears of pain because I reckon I'm quite good at pain I have a like a I think I can withstand a lot of physical pain but that was just disgusting it was something else I'm I, Forgive me, I don't know if I had the membrane sweep before or after my epidural, but I think it had to be just, be maybe just before the epidural because it was the new midwife. But anyway, I'm not sure of the order of events again. As I said, I don't really remember too well. So yeah, they gave me the epidural, and I had to. It was one of those epidurals that you could self-administer. So like every 15 minutes, a beep would go off, and the beep would be to remind you to press it again if you wanted some more pain relief. Finally, alhamdulillah, I sort of went back to my old self in that I could breathe and sort of have a conversation with my husband and. It's, yeah, I mean, it's kind of a miraculous thing, the epidural. I eventually was able to get to sleep at like half 11 midnight, which again, is very difficult for me. So I've been up for a long time already and I've been up, yeah, you know, going through labor, it's a bloody exercise, like it's hard. While I was asleep, the midwife would come in and top up my epidural once it started to beep and stuff like that. And my husband was just in the corner trying to sleep on this hard reclining chair. And I was just like, oh God, this is it now, we're here. And the midwife woke me up and it was around 2 a.m. And she woke me up to check me and guess what? I had suddenly dilated to 10 centimeters. So I was in labor, like active labor. I was ready to push. <laughs> and so I was like, oh my God. I was like, okay, wow, this is happening. I'm gonna meet my daughter. I'm gonna meet my daughter in like a couple of, within a few hours. And subhanAllah, that was just a shot of adrenaline. I was ready sort of thing. And then she was like, okay, look, in the next hour, we're gonna start pushing at around 3 a.m. And so within the next hour, if you want to, you can stop with the epidural so that you'll be able to feel a contraction and you can feel the need to push, which is what I did. I took one more epidural, I think. One more um, shot of epidural, I think. I couldn't feel the pain of it, but I could feel some sensation. And I tell you, this epidural knocked my legs out. My legs were like tree stumps. I remember t telling her, I was like, look, I don't want to lie down when I'm giving birth. I don't want to be flat on my back. Um, so she adjusted the bed and so my legs were technically in stirrups which i wanted to avoid like the plague my legs were up a little bit but because they had like made the bed go down like this my legs were just in stirrups to be supported because like i said my legs were like tree stumps i couldn't feel anything which was basically like the best that i could get out of the worst not the worst situation i shouldn't say that but out of the situation that i ended up in because gravity was still again helping me yeah i don't know it was just and that sort of just happened really quickly. My husband came to stand behind me. I remember the lit, the lovely midwife was just there. She had the lights on and stuff, and she was just ready to to like coach me through it. And she was, I think she was from Ghana. She was a lovely older lady, and she, her accent, something about her accent was so comforting. <laughs> and she was just, she was coaching me through it, and she was like, you know, you got this. She was just like the biggest cheerleader, cheerleader and this is someone like you'd want. It just makes sense for her to be doing this job, you know? So it was only my husband and the midwife in the room, obviously. During this time, like I said in my birth plan, I didn't want any unnecessary people in the in the room. And then she asked me to push. Okay, sorry if the angle has changed or the lighting's changed or anything. I've just had to grab my daughter. My husband was standing beside me. He was holding my hand. And then the midwife was just, you know, doing her job. And so she would coach me through it when to push. I'm pushing whenever she tells me to push. And you know, breathing in a certain way and just like trying to squeeze this baby out of me. <laughs> so anyway, I was pushing for, I think it was about half an hour. Like you could see her head go in and out, in and out. 
um, because she would just get to that point and then I guess I'd stop pushing or I just run out of breath or like run out of I think what they tell you to do is what I did anyway is like sort of hold my breath a little and then push and then un until I can breathe it or something I don't even remember how it happened but something like that anyway and then it got to a point where I remember I pushed my husband can see her head like the midwife can see her hair but then I'd stop she'd go back in and I remember the midwife saying okay right um, if you can't get her out on this next push then we're gonna have to intervene um, and we'll probably have to use the forceps as soon as she said that I was like no chance no way so like in my birth plan as well I didn't want any interventions like forceps or the vacuum or anything like that so forceps delivery I just didn't want to have that sort of delivery for my child um, obviously in some cases you can't help it but in this case I could help it so the next push I think was the push um, and so midwife as she's coaching you to push and like stop pushing it's because she can see where the baby's at the risk of tearing and I guess that sort of stuff so this push after she told me that if I can't get her out then you have to use forceps I was like no not doing that so this push I held my breath and I just I must have broke my husband's hand and I squeezed and like just pushed as hard as I could right and it's really difficult to know how to do it correctly in that moment because especially if you're like you're on a bit of epidural you don't really you can't really feel much except the pressure and you don't know when the pressure is going to be enough to get the baby out I pushed and I remember the midwife saying okay stop 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 um and I guess I was just like in my own head I'm like okay I gotta do this I gotta do this I gotta do this I didn't it's not it's like I heard her but I didn't really hear what she was giving me advice to do like I couldn't understand what she was like asking me to do so I just kept pushing and then my daughter was born <laughs> And she just came flooding out. <laughs> like, um, just, alhamdulillah, she just came flying out. See, now that I'm looking back, I knew that she told me to stop pushing because it was a risk for me in regards to tearing. And obviously now with everything that I'm about to say, I'm going to put a trigger warning here because it does include blood. And like, if you've had like an experience giving birth or anything where um, you've had to have like the emergency bells rung, maybe you don't want to watch this part of the video when my daughter came out i did panic a little bit because she wasn't crying straight away <sighs> obviously <sighs> there's me thinking okay i can't hear a cry yet because you know usually the baby comes out and they just sort of start screaming straight away based on what i've seen in documentaries and one born every minute and all of these sort of shows my daughter didn't cry straight away she, she I think it was a good like 10 seconds before she screamed and I don't know if that's because she didn't realise that she could scream or she was like on the outside world and she wasn't in my tummy anymore. I remember looking down and seeing her and she was just like this goopy mess of hair and skin and blood and yeah it was just... <laughs> Hamdler. So obviously I'm starting to like get a bit panicky like my daughter's not crying and this is all happening in my head by the way because I feel like everything sort of happens in slow motion until your baby's on you is how i felt anyway in that moment because i remember just like my husband's just like looking down at her and the midwife is looking at her catching her coming out <laughs> and then suddenly my baby's not inside me anymore and like she's right there and i could see she's covered in all these fluids <laughs> all i want to do is just have her on me and hold her um and because she was she didn't cry straight away i was just like mentally I'm starting to panic I'm like okay god bismillah like what's happening why is this happening so the whole time like, during the monitoring and everything she was completely fine alhamdulillah she was just sort of chilling so eventually alhamdulillah she did start crying and like screaming as you see babies usually do and um, the midwife had put her onto my chest and so we were doing skin to skin her cord was still attached and everything and um yeah she was just oh it was incredible so my daughter was just wide awake and she was staring at everything she was looking around I remember one of her hands was by her face like this and like subhanallah like she's just moving her fingers about and it's just incredible subhanallah alhamdulillah alhamdulillah once she was on my chest she just started <laughs> she just started staring at me and it was just like I feel like my life started it's gonna sound dramatic but I feel like my life started in that second that that second right there was like this is what I've lived this far to do and now I can live the rest of my life knowing that this moment has happened and 
like alhamdulillah my door is okay so surreal it was incredible alhamdulillah and it's still well like, it always gets me emotional just thinking about it because like i said before if you've experienced any sort of loss related to pregnancy and uh, anything like that miscarriage i think especially like because it was my first pregnancy with my my first baby that i'd miscarried on it was like now everything else is always going to be tainted like i can't explain it properly but it's like i'm never going to feel that sort of elation again because there's always going to be that worry in my head so like i was saying before i didn't get myself too hyped up during this pregnancy it was more so about like okay we're going to take it day by day step at a time appointment by appointment and see what kind of happens and where things go and then you know alhamdulillah each appointment heartbeat strong alhamdulillah yeah um her heart, her heart rate is great it's good all of that um she was kicking well as well which is amazing anyway and very quickly after that all of this happened like i was saying within 10 seconds where she came flooding out um and then she was on my chest she hadn't screamed then she screamed it all happened within about 10 seconds and i remember my husband was still looking at where my daughter came out although my daughter was on my chest i don't remember it like this because obviously i'm just sort of like i'm <laughs> dazed just staring at my daughter and her big brown eyes hand on and she had some bruising around her face as well because obviously she'd she'd like <laughs> it's like she was stuck in the door so many times and then she just couldn't get out i had to ask my husband this because i wasn't too certain what was happening because like i was saying i was dazed and i kind of do remember this my husband said to the midwife looking down at me he was like is this normal and i remember looking at the midwife and she looked worried she was like observing what was happening with me and she was like my husband asked is this normal the midwife said no this is not normal i'm just gonna wait and see what happens and basically i was bleeding out i was losing a lot of blood i don't know what's happening down there i can't see anything my daughter's in my arms i'm just happy enjoying my daughter's company and giving her lots of hugs and kisses and just crying over the fact that i have a child now um and so i'm kind of oblivious to what's happening i can't feel anything because i'm on the epidural but essentially i was losing lots of blood the midwife said that she wanted to wait for a second to see what's happening and see if the blood will stop and the way my husband described it is that as soon as my daughter came out this gush of blood followed and just like started soaking up the bed and so the midwife realized that the blood wasn't going to stop and she called in two doctors and they realized hamla female um they realized that like i needed to be stitched they couldn't see what's happening i'm losing too much blood it turned out that i lost almost a liter and a half of my blood within 30 seconds which is a huge amount of blood anyway the doctors looked at me examined me and they were like right okay i don't want you to panic but we're gonna have to ring the alarm and loads of people are just gonna come flooding in we're just trying to sort everything out i was like okay okay then i literally don't give a care in the world what they're saying right now because i'm just like holding my daughter and well like, as soon as soon as i knew that she was good that she was okay i just really didn't care what happened to me because <laughs> like i said i didn't feel the pain i just felt like it was just oh, i don't even know how to explain it it was just like the only word that i can use to describe it is fulfillment it just i just felt fulfilled in that moment so they rang the alarm and about 10 midwives and doctors came in to the room and um and alhamdulillah again i guess allah was listening to my du'as that day accepted my du'as that day and every single one was a lady so i didn't have to worry about that and one of them was i remember her being a young muslim girl and um i think she was pakistani or bengali or something like that i remember she was just sort of like by the bed the head of my bed the whole time yeah i was just sort of holding my door and i remember they shifted the bed back so that i was laying a little bit and they then brought all the lights over to see what was happening they started to grab all these cloths and just sort of like put it down on the bed under me grab these cloths wipe the blood away and then chuck it into this bucket and when i tell you ugh, there were so many cloths full of my blood and they were just trying to collect it all so that they could see i think they weighed it actually at the end to see how much i had lost um and so they're they're in the middle of um collecting all this blood <laughs> from the bed and i'm just like there holding my daughter and just like looking at my daughter and touching her face and all this and everyone's chatting around me it was sort of like the world just blurred right away and it was just it was beautiful alhamdulillah anyway so they're grabbing these cloths and they're chucking the blood into the bloody cloths into the buckets and they they're doing this again and again and again until i guess they could get a visual of what was happening by the way like everything is just out there exposed like i think in these situations that you're 
alhamdulillah they were all women yeah but and it was an emergency situation because i was bleeding you don't have a choice as a patient and as a muslim like it's okay in these situations where it's an emergency and so when the midwife had told me to stop pushing that's when I had torn and it was because she could see that I would tear. The tear was a second degree tear which includes the skin and the muscle. However, the tear was not external, it was an internal tear. It was really hard for them to find the origin of where I was bleeding from because it was in me. And there were two two doctors, I remember, two female doctors, Hamda. They were there and um, they were just, you know, with their pads. I felt like it was an episode of Grey's Anatomy, I'm not gonna lie. And one of the midwives had taken my daughter to get, like, get her weighed and measured and all of that. And then as she's bringing her to me, she was like, oh, do you want me to give her to the dad? And I was like, yeah, of course, go, go ahead. Give. That's me, that's me like completely forgetting my husband exists. <laughs> I was like, yeah, of course, give, give her to my husband, to her father. And um, so he was sat in his chair again and she had wrapped my daughter with this cloth so that obviously she wouldn't get blood on, on my husband, I guess. I mean, there was blood all over me, as in like from her, it was just, I guess not. If you look at it, it kind of looks like a horror movie, but it was fine, alhamdulillah. Like, I remember at one point there was just, they were sewing me up. It took them about an hour to sew me up. And it got to a point where it was taking too long and I was still losing blood, not at the same pace that I was before. But I remember them saying that if we can't find the source of the bleeding and we can't stitch here, we'll have to take you into theatres. And so I was like, oh God, no, I don't want to be away from my daughter. I don't want to have to be like, I don't want to have to be in that kind of environment. Alhamdulillah, like the Muslim girl that was next to me, she was sort of like holding my hand the whole time and like I'm making adhkar and reading the Quran in my head and stuff like this. I remember it got to a point where I was just laying back and my head was back on the pillow and I was just sort of watching my husband and my daughter and he's just like so in love with her and I remember just thinking like, Alhamdulillah, like this is, this was what I wanted to do. And if I'm gone now, like if this is it for me then I'm I'm okay with that. I know it sounds so dramatic but this is genuinely what was like running through my head at the t at the time. Anyway, um my battery lights flashing now so I'm if the video ends I'm really sorry. But essentially they stitched me up. I got my daughter back. There was an issue with weight because the first measurement they took of her, the first weight that they took was incorrect and she was weighing underweight and they weighed her again and alhamdulillah she was fine. Then they basically moved me onto, it wasn't the postpartum ward, I'm not sure if it was a recovery ward but it was somewhere else so that I could be checked. But let me just say, because I had bled so much and once they had done stitching they had put all of this, I don't know if it was cotton pads or cloths or what, they had stuffed me like a turkey and I didn't feel the pain until the next morning and once the epidural had worn off and subhanallah like that pain was worse than the memory of this is the worst pain i felt in my life and it had me crying subhanallah anyway um i might have to finish this in a vlog or in another video but it, it sounds kind of negative the ending part of this story but alhamdulillah like every everyone was fine everything's fine i was okay my recovery alhamdulillah was so good um i'll probably do a q and a on this so if you want to ask questions just go on my instagram um because that's where i put up the question and answer thingies Anyway, um, sorry again that this was rushed at the end, but thank you so much for watching. If you want to share your story, feel free to. And if you have any questions, then let me know over on Instagram. I'll leave the details in the description. Thank you for watching. I hope this wasn't triggering for any of you. Um, if you want to subscribe, I'd love for you to like the video and leave a comment if you want to. Thank you for listening to my story. Hopefully it's a positive one. And to you, I don't know, it's positive for me anyway.